I had for today was the gift of giving. The gift of giving. Thank you very much. And those are just the, insp the kind of inspirational stories that cause us to know that our giving is in the right place. And it's opening and li lives to new experiences and success, which is what our center certainly is about. And now we have this Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you say your name. Mm -hmm. Real. Moira Chaldron. Moira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Ask the animals and they will teach you, or birds of the air and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. In his hand is the life of every creature. That is from the book of Job, chapter 12. And I like it because it reminds me of why the work that Sierra Club does is so important and why your donation is so important to us because it allows us to do the work um, in protecting uh, British Columbia's amazing environment, which is a, a gift to us. Take a moment and close your eyes for a second. And I want you to imagine the majestic beauty of a cool, dark forest. Imagine a sleeping bear with a belly full of salmon. Imagine the forceful breath of a whale as it rises to the ocean's surface. And those are the things that Sierra Club seeks to protect. And we have to act before they become a distant memory for our grandchildren. Sierra Club is one of BC's oldest environmental organizations. We were founded in 1969 by a small group of people at um, the University of Victoria. They really cared about Vancouver Island's forests. And our early campaigns helped protect areas like the Nipmat Triangle um, and the West Coast Trail. And since then, we've helped protect amazing places like Clackwood Sound, the Great Bear Rainforest, and the Kuzimatin Valley Grizzly Bear Sanctuary. So lots of, and lots of places where you would hike or kayak, those are places that we've helped protect, along with other organizations. But um, we face greater challenges than ever before in BC. And I'll just give you a, a very quick rundown of some of the main campaigns that your donation is going to help. Um, the Great Bear Rainforest is a huge area uh, of forest up on the sort of mid to north um, west coast of BC. It's the home to the spirit bear, which is uh, a unique, unique animal in the whole world. It's the only place where spirit bears live. Um, and unfortunately, it is now threatened, after 10 years of working to protect it, it's now threatened by a pipeline running from the tar sands to uh, Kitimat. Um, and with the pipeline also from oil tankers up the coast. Um, I'd say this is probably the greatest threat to BC's environment that we've faced since the 1970s when the tanker traffic was banned. Um, and so we're working really hard to um, to not have that pipeline go through one of our really unique areas in the world and not have uh, oil tanker traffic uh, coming up the coast, which would threaten the salmon. Because of the unique web of life, if you threaten the salmon, you also threaten the forest, you also threaten the bears. So it, it's really a big deal for BC. We're also working at the, the opposite end of the province, um, in the south east corner, where BC meets Montana and Alberta, in the Flathead River Valley. The Flathead River Valley is protected in Alberta, it's protected in Montana it's, uh, as Glacier National Park. It's not protected in BC. Um, we have been successful uh, in getting a legislative ban on mining and logging in the valley, which is fantastic. But really it deserves our highest protection we can give in Canada, and that's a national park. And so that's what we're working towards. And really the, the federal government is on board. It's the provincial government we have to convince that that's the, the best protection that we should be giving it. 
And with the national park, it would become um, Canada's, uh, the, sorry, the world's first international peace park. Um, so that would be a really exciting, exciting thing to have. We also work in schools, um, teaching thousands of children across BC every year um, about BC's amazing uh, ecosystems, the animals and the plants that live here, and supporting them in being environmental uh, leaders and taking care of, taking care of uh, the land and animals of BC. Um, and that's just a taste of some of the things that, that we do. We get, uh, we get involved in lots of things, as you can imagine. The Sierra Club was formed a hundred years ago by John Muir to help people connect with nature. He believed if you connect with nature, then you want to protect it. Um, and now it's up to us. So I'd like to thank you so much for doing your part. It really means a lot to us. And if you'd like to find out more, uh, come and ask me afterwards. I brought a bag full of printed newsletters and things like that to give you more of an idea of what we're up to. Or do visit our website. It has lots of beautiful pictures on it that have been donated to us. Um, and there's lots of other ways to get involved. You can join our local group. We have a group in Victoria that's very active doing outings and um, doing campaigns locally. Uh, for example, um, with the Wanda Trail recently that um, was threatened by development. Our local group was very active in having that um, threat removed. Um, you can volunteer in our office or you can come to one of our gumboot parties where we go and clean out the old grass beds and get very muddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are a registered charity so you can become a regular donor or you can remember Sierra Club in, uh, as a legacy which um, is also very helpful to us. Um, and just in closing, thank you very much. It's really a uh, privilege to be here. Thanks so much. six of us. Uh, uh, we are not funded by any um, government at all, M mostly funded by a single uh, retrievement that was handed to us uh, about five years ago. That's really, so we very pre much appreciate uh, being allowed to come here today and speak to you and for your uh, time. It's wonderful. Our mission is to provide education, prevention, and support to those affected by Hepatitis C. That's what, uh, meaning that um, it's not just the people that, are, that have Hep C, but communities around it. We feel that only through public education and awareness we can prevent and eventually eliminate the virus. I think it's appropriate today to tell you my personal reasons for getting involved with Hep C B C uh, and uh, supporting them. Uh, New Year's has a very special meaning to me because eight years ago, on January 16, 2004, I was diagnosed with terminal uh, liver disease. I was told that Hep C had been attacking my liver for the past 30 years, and now I was to the point of certain death in a very short time. Seven years ago, I spent Christmas in the hospital clinging to life that the solemn thought that if I were to live meant somebody else had to die as I needed a, a liver transplant as my own uh, means of survival. My children at the, at the time were 8 years old and 10 years old. I was uh, 45 years old at the time. They might wonder why it took so long to figure out that I had, that my liver was dying and why didn't I do something about it. I mean, I had hepatitis since I was a teen. Well, the fact is I had no idea that I had hepatitis, nor had I had ever crossed my mind that I would have had it as I was not living a life that exposed me to the risks associated with hepatitis C. And I had no education on what is hepatitis C. That's why it was often referred to as a silent killer, 
you can have it for 30 years and not even be aware as a matter of, and not even be aware that you have it. As a matter of fact, it is estimated that as many as 60% of the people who have hepatitis C don't even know they have it. 59% of reported cases in 2009. So I ask you to consider your lifestyle. To ask yourself, you know, even if you haven't been exposed, living a life risk-free now, what were you doing 30 years ago? Maybe exposed to a blood transfusion or a, a needle prick in healthcare workers, playing contact sports, getting a tattoo, experimenting with drugs. It's, it's a simple blood test to tell you if you have hepatitis C or not. So my story ended up as a happy ending. One Christmas, one week after Christmas, on New Year's morning, 2005, 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning, I got a call that I that they had found me a donor and I had a successful liver transplant. <laughs> Two years later, I I, I went, underwent treatment for hepatitis C, and I have been free of hepatitis. It worked, and I've been free of hepatitis C for three years now. It was a lot of positive thinking and family support that got me through those years of suffering. But for many Hep C sufferers, it's not a happy ending. As many as 3,000 people in Canada die each year from hepatitis C. And a cure rate, although improving with the introduction of new treatment, is still less than 60%. And if you're fortunate enough to get on the transplant list, there is a 1 in 3 chance that you'll die waiting as the number of people requiring transplants far exceeds the number of transplant people needing one. <coughs> the best way to treat hepatitis is to prevent it. <coughs> what happened to me was very preventable. I hope you all have a great new year and continue to be living as positive, with a positive attitude as I do. And that the song uh, that we started with today was very appropriate. Every day is a Thanksgiving. I've now uh, had seven years of borrowed time and I'm still doing great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And that, actually, that's very dear to my heart because my son-in-law, well, ex-son-in-law, but I never ever took it that I divorced him. My daughter, <laughs> uh, he just had a liver transplant for hep C a few months ago, and he is still doing really, really well. And he was in the hospital, and he would have had literally weeks to live. So that is very close to my heart. So thank you so much, Steve, for the work that you're doing. And our last one uh, tied is to Victoria Hospice and Palliative Care, and they're not here today. I did receive an email that they were going to be here, but obviously something has happened. So I am very pleased that to be issuing them the check, and for our congregation, we let you know that our tie to each one of these organizations is $622.23. <laughs> mighty community. So thank you, each one of you. And all I want to say uh, for hospice is that my aunt was in hospice and before she passed away, and she was 92, and they were absolutely incredible to her in caring for her with love and compassion and in, for the family, caring for us with love and compassion. So I'm very pleased that we are issuing this to, to, to hospice. And now, thank you everyone, we'll move on to the next part of our